any feedback, any questions, maybe let's go one by one. Well, we, we covered a lot. Uh, I think, like, related to and stack at all, we only missed Maureen and, like, I mean, Mike can talk about that tomorrow. But. So, uh, I, I have a question regarding the node. In the end, what you spawn, it's a Rust into the pinot, and that's it. With some. And JS, the two implementations of here. Oh, okay, so you have some implementation of here, and then, like, you have this core here. Which is the one that implements the queues and, and the VM. And that's it. The, they are it's similar. Quite like, the both implementations are, are similar. The, the Rust more full feature that participates in Kadena and stuff like that can run global and services and JS is kind of. Yeah, what I'm wondering is like in, in the end it's a really light node. Yeah. Right? So it's just a little to be with the VM and maybe a data store for. Yeah, right? very simple to do. Yeah. Okay. And if we want to enhance it, like I'm thinking about what you said the other day, implementing, I don't know, uh, bit swap over mm -hmm. Alpha VM because it seems quite easy. That's why I was asking about your yeah. transmissions and like yeah. all of this. So we could like have the same way that you have the, the, the standard library, or I don't know how can you call it, standard model or built ins, yeah. Uh, or the built ins. You could have a built in for each of these protocols and build an ad hoc IP address. So yeah. from a really uh, slim Rust to you know, have mm -hmm. an IP node or I, I was thinking about more, more, more than like BitSwap dating. So BitSwap is a network protocol and uh, there is a code for generating like data packets to be sent to the network. That code could be moved, compiled to WebAssembly, run as a service on Fluence. That service could be associated with just a stream that identifies BitSwap and every data that comes out of the service could be sent through lib 2 p uh, connection to other node, whatever Aqua says to do. It just says, hey, this swap service, uh, send this kind of message to this peer. And it will just generate a uh, byte array, uh, say, hey, send this, hey, no, send this to this peer. And when, once you receive the message, uh, send it back to the, to the service. So service will have local memory and disk state, and it will be kind of a WebAssembly handle for this service. Yeah. And when you have these services, what is the access? So, you have this WASM model, like implementing a piece of aware or other computation, mm -hmm. and you have uh, the service abstractions that we mentioned. What is the access to? So, you would have to give. I mean, in the end, the output is just a, uh, a blob, right? It could, so, can also write to this if, you're, if that's what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm wondering like, what, what are the interface and the bandwidth with the, the outside world? Because mm -hmm. I was asking for the context, the context is in the input yeah. state for the output VM. You have the service that are loaded, you execute using the current state, but then there's an output state. Yeah. But what side effects? We yeah. Have, we can, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, that, it's through YZ, so you don't have the network, but you can write to this. Can you specify which directories are accessible? Like when you deploy. But I could open connect, so without while you open connections mm -hmm. and then send something through the stream. Uh, that has to be yet implemented on the node, but it's pretty simple. You just like, what do you want? Uh, well, uh, I feel like uh, there is a, a small misconception. Uh, ArcVM finally says, uh, please uh, uh, do this. And do this means peer ID, service ID, function name, arguments, and that's all. And what happens on the peer side, uh, ArcVM just doesn't care. Right, we have a default implementation of what could happen. The, the default it's uh, WebAssembly services with uh, these uh, managed effects. Essentially, what what happens? Uh, the the service is being called, and uh, uh, it knows that it's called with arguments from something, and it knows that okay, I am the service. I have uh, this peer deployed me. Uh, I have this peer ID where I'm executed and like uh, very isolated sandbox of access. So if you need any capabilities, either you as the node operator may allow whitelist this service and say, I allow this service with this hash, IPFS hash, to be uh, to have an access to this effects, to this folder, to, to this binary, to this socket, whatever. Or uh, for the lib 2 use case, probably you will not use WebAssembly at all. 
because probably you will have this direct, that, that was your question about optimization. Uh, these aspects of uh, like performance, security, and, and so on, they are very isolated, like algebraic effects. You have isolated place for a, a computation, and you can reason only about computations here. You don't need to, to know anything else. You have one place where you have this code to socket. You can first use uh, channels for that, then write to socket directly, and so on. So in this place, in the host, like in the peer, you have all the context that you need to make the decision whether you should execute this call or not. Okay, so let me suggest a bit like you. So it, it would be all at one code, and what you're saying is that there's no need for any computation in many cases. Uh, I say that uh, finally, Aqua code, uh, Aqua is is pure function. Yes. And uh, finally, uh, the peer decides how to execute the computation, mm -hmm. and it can be done with WebAssembly, yeah. or it can be done with the native code, mm -hmm. which could be more efficient and could give you much more capabilities. And you have all the data to decide whether you want to allow this code to run or not. And uh, the, the, the aspects are very isolated. You have orchestration uh, in one hand, uh, like Mike shown uh, this picture with uh, the queues. And uh, uh, the, these queues are isolated. The queue to Marine, but you can add more queues. You can say, I also I will have four queues for lib to be uh, Aqua protocol for Aqua VM for Marine or like web or something and the fourth queue for Bitswap for example and uh, uh, it's another resource you just plug it into the control plane mm -hmm. of Aqua VM but but Bitswap will work like through lib to be directly like it's a different layer right like the yeah, yes, layer it's a different protocol. It's a different lib to be protocol. So yeah. finally, it's a, it's a socket uh, where you write, you read, uh, you have right. some well, well, the same if we could build the protocol, like without having to build it low level, it could be within the VM option. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's a yes. Yeah. So like, can you implement this whole basically? In Aqua. Purely in Aqua. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's why I was trying to understand. Purely in Aqua so that you handle all of these. We, we, just, have have to, we just have to figure out how to patch, uh, how to register a handler. Into the PSD. Yes. How to, how to teach Aqua VM to register a LibDB handler for that service so that it can see what it's based on. Yeah. So that's about the dispatcher. You just need to, to yeah. patch the dispatcher, and that's all. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, for example, it could have separate queue for the dispatcher, and then like events could be streamed to Aqua VM there. Okay, with a different protocol ID. Yeah, uh, right. Okay. You, you okay. still live with the same protocol. You, you can register. You can probably register this dispatcher in. I mean, I don't know if Aqua VM does this right now, but you can. Yeah. You no. Can, what I was wondering is, if you want to talk to other bits of nodes, you need to have the same ID. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. so not um, with only Aqua VM. Yeah, so that's why I was kind of. Yeah, it should be compatible. You could yes. have se several implementations at the same time, and in Aqua you would have like the the control plane, but I guess the the actual like. Data packet creating and serialization. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's a really cool feature that we can also have other like protocols in the control plane. But yeah. I was I was more thinking about the and, and this is in, in like five calculus, right? Is that is it correct? Um, mm -hmm. Yes, uh, control plane. Yes, would be in five calculus, but streaming would should be should be probably on site because it's like it's not yeah. using. Yeah, yeah, yeah. particularly kind of Yes. Yeah. For Python calculus, it could be seen as a like uh, uh, name or a channel where events like should come to the other services. Yeah. Because yeah, uh, yeah, I really think like my biggest thing of feedback is content address all the things because then you get like the internal state of the of the VM. You, you have like the invocation. The function invocation is just a set of like the parameters of the invocation. Mm -hmm. Everything from the peer, I guess the peer is like an identity, but the the service can be um, you can map that to a hash of the code that's going to run. The function is also is just like some offset on that, and um, 
And then the arguments to the function can all be hash linked. Yes. And that, that whole thing is now memorizable. And you have a way of like saying this thing you can like, you know, if it's a few, for pure functions, you can maybe label things that are pure and then you can run them only once in the network um, and then store, store outputs. Uh, and then separate, you can then start doing things like, um, yeah, like take entire, like decompose some like long computation into different particles and then like suspend type states and bring them back. Very much. You, can, you, you can do, um, you can have a programming model on top of this that gives you like um, coroutines or like the, the await, async await mm -hmm. type models mm -hmm. where you can write a very complex program and whenever you async await, you compile down to different particles and they run correctly, like um, in, in like, the right sequences. Yeah, it's, 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 it's called for example. Yeah, it's already async await. Mm -hmm. It's just coroutines inside this. Yeah. Okay, and then they already sort of like suspend, like the, does, do those get split into different particles, or is that one particle? Uh, it should be one particle, and yeah, one. It, it, it depends on the conception. So particle, uh, could you please explain that? I think this is because of you. Okay. You want all particles? Do you like quantum but... mechanics? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Lorenz is uh, the flow of particles. Yeah. And uh, uh, with uh, these pi couples, we have it uh, split sometimes, and we have different observers, and then we have an observation. But actually, it's the same particle, it just flows. Mm -hmm. So we have a particle and many observations of this particle by different peers. Uh, usually they uh, have different views, but finally it converges. So you can name the particle the smart package. It has a, a mutable data uh, with the recordings of the observations and a mutable part that describes the flow. So that's, that's about the particle. And, uh, when uh, the RPVM execution is done uh, on uh, the peer, uh, the result is uh, a list of the next peer IDs and uh, uh, the subjective observation of what the data is. And the same data, the same particle is sent to them, to all of them. And it can trigger state changes in group in the peers that it goes to. So meaning if I'm persisting, so I mean, I'm sending something to Mike through you. Can I change your? If I send a particle, can I trigger state changes in you? So where are the st Can we persist intermediate states like in IPFS or, or? We, we have two 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 layers of uh, of state changing here. The first one is uh, uh, for every uh, particle. I remember what I've seen. So uh, I have the cache of uh, my last observation and when I have the new data from somebody, I merge, I learn only the new facts and keep the, the old facts that I already knew. And I remember it, it's the state. So uh, we say that every particle um, creates a single use coordination network and uh, this coordination network for every participant, every participating peer, it has the state for this coordination network to coordinate, to have the fork join, for example. To have the join, you need to remember something from one branch and add from another. The second layer is uh, uh, what could be done with the service calls. Service call can trigger any kind of event, uh, like effects on, on, on the peer. So, uh, okay. one, and uh, we, we have different uh, approach to, to that. For example, uh, within uh, the same uh, particle, within the same execution flow, uh, we have a file vault. We have an isolated uh, single use file system so that our services are sandboxed, but they can exchange data inside the local peer, inside the, the same request. Things like that. Uh, and that's how we integrate Yeah, I was thinking like the, the kind of use case of indexing service, where what we have some different service providers that want to broadcast like an update of their other systems. Yeah. If I send a particle like updating the, the I mean, sending you an advertisement mm -hmm. or, or like broadcasting an advertisement to a set of users, if I can update your state of this service. But this is actually what Fodex was doing yeah. in his workflow. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. sending particles and updating their model state. Remote kind of index database. Okay, okay. So I said particles that both upload file and then. Okay, so when you execute the service, you also like 
remember the state. Yeah. Well, sir, by that. Okay. Well, services have state. Like, well, they, they have memory. There are backends, basically. You just call right. Yeah. The thing is that you have like. Yeah, but they have to send you the same state. So they send no. the same service. The state is isolated for each service, right? Yeah. So you remember it on these. So you want to have some, so some replication, be, right? Yeah. So maybe another mapping, correct me if I'm wrong here, is for each particle, um, you have like a very small amount of state that you define. It's kind of like an actor model, mm -hmm. like the yeah. local state of that object. And when you are going to run it, you like, you know, like, break, like unfreeze the state, you context switch into it, you then process an operation, and then you produce some output. That's another message. It's very similar to the actor model. Yeah. Um, and then you potentially update the internal state of the actor, and then you like, freeze so that. My question is, yeah. if from one actor, I can access the state of another actor. That's... No, well, you shouldn't be able to. Yeah, but, but the, the services, they are per system. They, they always run. So they, there are many parties so, can access the same service. Well, they, 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 yeah. when, a, when, a, when a computation in one party will talk to the state in another, it has to do it through a message, right? Or yes, through our call. Yeah. Yeah. Now no, 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 there is only one way. Yeah, because yeah. you, you don't want to like poke inside. Yeah. That, that'll, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Off. But how can you describe that in that part? That's what I'm having a hard time. So, so let's say that we have the indexing uh, actor, and then we have some other service that. Actor and service are the same Wait, thing, basically. Right? Yeah, so you have a particle, particle A and particle B with your own state, mm -hmm. and you want to access read state from particle B from. You cannot be aware of particle A in particle in, in B. In another tier. So, right. so you can have a service and you both could be aware about the service. And particle A stores something into this service, particle B reads from this service. You okay. have an exchange box. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah that was my question. Like how yeah. do you interact if it was an actor model where you mm -hmm. interact with two messages or you uh, it's not exactly it's super close to, to an actor model, but uh, we have these two two layers. One is about aqua and coordination, and nothing about compute and nothing about state. Another one is about compute, and uh, uh, there are two different approaches to compute. Both are absolutely doable with what we have with Fluence. But anyway, the first approach is to run the computations uh, every time when you need it and stop when you don't need it. So, uh, for example, uh, that's what one of our users uh, did. Uh, he was uh, uh, running, uh, reading from Ethereum the hash of uh, the WebAssembly, then runs this WebAssembly, then gets IPFS hash of the previous state, copies uh, this IPFS state to the service, does the new computation, uh, brings the state back to IPFS, and removes his service. So in this case, you don't have the service outside the particle because you do everything, all the life cycle inside. But usually, it's not not this way. Usually, you have the service like long running. Uh, for example, you pay for it, or you deploy it, or you have it built in, and it lives, it outlives the particle. And you can know this service ID. You can advertise it. Uh, so. In this case, you can use it as okay. But that's, that's, uh, awesome. you also can can deploy these services also with another particle. So we have basically like one Aqua script that you know rolls out services onto some peers. You deploy your services and then you yeah, and then you have another Aqua script that that is 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 logic around it. Yeah. 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 Uh, I have to run go run a workshop, but um, this is really cool. We let's just um, let's talk more more about the VM and so on. And yeah, I think the I feel the buying all this stuff, I think is gonna be like the right mer merging of all of this. And um, yeah, you can that. Right here. So, yep, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> you should try. No, I, 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 I will try to try it. Actually, I want to, yeah, I really want to, because I've been dreaming about this slim DB2P host with computation, mm. which I think that you have, and like be able to, so instead of like um, implementing a protocol several times, mm. you have a single implementation that runs single. Because as long as you have a VM, for instance, you would be able to run this with a single implementation of this mm -hmm. And if a new host, like JavaScript, 
uh, node comes, is they just have to worry about the core, yeah. the, the implementation of the core here in JavaScript, but then the algorithm is the same, so the implementation of the pixel is the same. Mm -hmm. And if, if you could roll out any protocol, decentralized protocol, quite fast. And it should be simple to implement node in Python or whatever, because it's very slim. Yeah, and it's slim. So it's, it, as long as you have like the Python lib to p and you yeah. have the, the, I don't know how you call it, fluent core or peer core or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Aquilium is, is a pure function and it's uh, very, like, it has one browser that could be embedded. And, and I really like the, the, the thing that you can persist, per, in, you can even persist uh, intermediate states in some decentralized yes. search and yes. then load it. I mean, it's not even my node would have to do that, but like, once you have CIDs and you have these things, yeah. then yes. there's a, it's a deterministic machine. So you can just say this CID is the current state, this CID is the previous state, or this CID is the. Mm -hmm. And it will output. Um, yeah, it should, it should be some some displeasure of the CID that passes. Yeah, I mean, I see CID, but like uh, you can persist this. Uh, the, the thing is that not only computation can be decentralized, but also the search. Mm -hmm. of the... And I've been talking to to refrain, guy for just before before we start here, and he was describing my thing that they do with refrain like it's an. It's a, basically a whole, an interface that's basically an empty space where you can put any routing implementation. For example, you can have a routing implementation that does calendar routing, but on every message it streams discovery back to Indexer. And you could do that with Aqua pretty easily without like defining a more programs that you should override with HTTP API. You could, with with Aqua, there wouldn't be even a refrain. Just like <laughs> nature. Yeah, 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 there yeah, wouldn't yeah. be a need. I mean, just, now you can have a protocol. Don't try this. Don't try this. Don't try this. Don't try this. We should be worried about what's going on. Do you have any, any diagram? The diagram that you showed with the app of the app and the cubes? Uh, I, could, I could send you. So, it's so somewhere in the box. I think it's in the box. And I, also, I will teach you, like, I, I, I will talk I, tomorrow about the, this concept of like what can we do to have a single runtime with it to be host so that we don't have to be internet protocols. Mm -hmm. And like, I wanted to show the. Okay, so Mike can, 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 can send uh, you a little picture. You don't mind. Because I think it's, it's kind of what we want in the end, like having just Slim network layer, some universal runtime, and then that's it, you can build any node from there. Yeah. Of course, you would have to understand I believe. <laughs> and also, have, have diagrams of how Rust Pure works, like all the basically the whole structure, the whole architecture. I can send you all this. Nice. I'll send it to Aqua Track. Yeah. I wonder if you could comment on the uh, oh yeah, the differences in approach and where the where is that complementary? So if I got the other sense of that. Well, I think the uh, I mean I had it just. Basically, at them a little bit, but uh, I think we are not uh, addressing these. Uh, so, so, so they, they're kind of trying to do it in traditional but two ways. So it's basically like the Docker we like orchestrate and deploy. But they're not talking about how they deploy things, right? It means that it's basically like manually deployed on some machine, and mostly what they care about is um, how do they make sure. That they can execute, you know, machine learning model on top of you know, local data. Um, it and reminds me more like Golem and all of these yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. decentralized marketplaces for computation than yeah. actual decentralized computation. <laughs> 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 like that. that Interesting. Yeah, and, and I mean, this is important, right? right? In, in, in machine learning, it's super important to be close to data because, like, once you start sending data, you just lose performance immediately because it's user. Yeah. So, this is important. Ah, yeah. And for us, it's kind of interesting. We kind of create a framework. Like and this framework, I can create a protocol which would consider the yeah. interpretation yeah. to send those yeah. yeah. data. Uh, but you have the limitation that we run a lot of assembly. Mm -hmm. So your machine learning like training algorithm or whatever should run in web assembly. So you can you know something more yeah, 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 yeah. today. Like, if you can right, send like, like, yeah, better. Like, <laughs> I don't know my guess. Uh, <laughs> you know, so you <laughs> have 
that in order to kind of bypass that, you would need to uh, take your, your training algorithm and in Docker and then deploy Docker, put it behind Flynn's node on the same machine. So it's a little like tricky. Yeah. Uh, but uh, because we kind of believe that everything goes to WebAssembly and everything will be in WebAssembly, including machine learning uh, stuff. Then, like, it, it, it would be possible to easily mm -hmm. all this way to stuff. Why is it hard to do machine learning in WebAssembly? Why what? Why is it difficult to compile uh, machine learning code into WebAssembly? I think mainly because machine like machine learning is ninety percent Python, and Python yeah. compiles to WebAssembly. Yes. Now, yes. now yes. it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Previously, C Python. Yeah. Previously, C Python was compiled, and now uh, Python. Mm. Sorry, and Python yeah. also compiles. Yeah. And they have something like in for specific machine learning about what I said. Okay, don't listen to me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, what about like bindings and stuff? Like, if it's not fully in Python, if you're like, learning, if you're doing like CUDA operations through like PyTorch, so. Like, that might be too cool. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and, and GPU and stuff, yeah, that's, that's going to impact a little bit, I think. But, I mean, you can have potentially, you can have the adapter, right? You can have the WebAssembly adapter to this. Uh, it could be an system. external service, yeah, yeah that you mm -hmm. can call them. Yeah. We just haven't tried it yet, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like you can like have a, I think it's a local, yeah, you can just call an adapter that's also running locally, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Like a gRPC call within your, I guess, your local, assuming you're running your local desktop or something. I don't know. <laughs> this would be super exciting for the DAGs as well, because it's kind of like a little emerging behavior. Like you, mm -hmm. You mentioned like Sally Data and stuff. Uh, yeah. It'd be really cool to like go with Sally Data in uh, in Aqua. That'd be super cool if you can have like a, a grid of nodes mm -hmm. um, where the, the function was basically the, the update function for Sally Data and you can see this like emergent behavior with mm -hmm. like the gliders and all that sort of stuff. That'd be super cool. But like, uh, and then you can have like, I don't know, like DAOs, different DAOs can have different APIs and like Aqua could be the language that like kind of deals with. Distributors mm -hmm. uh, APIs got like some sort of higher level uh, emerging behavior from there. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, how do you verify the computation? Like how do you like I know you have the incoming basically you have an incoming like um, set. Uh, you have incoming particles. You have like the original state, new state, and then you have a set of operations through ZM. It's, it's a good question. Yeah. So uh, like why the like so as one of the sets we don't have any saved and deployment in the data. Mm -hmm. We start execution of the from the very beginning each time. Yeah. And it's a very great for verification. So now we uh, don't like do the verification, but in the future we want to have signatures of co result for a particular co result. Yeah. And by this approach, by recent verification from the very beginning, we could just uh, check the signature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in the future, we would replace the signatures with zero of proofs. Yeah. That would allow you just to check it. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right. Is there a way, like, cause do, you, do you send the particle? So you send the data and the code to a node, but is that, is that right? Yes, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Could it be the case because like often data needs to be kept uh, locally for some you know, privacy reasons or something like that? Is it possible that like, can only one node in the network might have a specific type of data, and that data mm -hmm. isn't allowed to leave that node? Uh, mm -hmm. and, then, and then maybe you just send it, the code to us. Yeah. And that would like tie in with embedded learning and stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. In this case, you need to, as I understand the question correctly, in this case, you need to know the executive ID of the service mm -hmm. you're making. Mm -hmm. yeah. And okay. you need to specify the back part. Yeah. Yeah. So, so a service usually defines, uh, can a service define data as well? Uh, uh, define what it mean? So, like, we could deploy, we, we run a node and we deploy a service to our own node. Mm -hmm. And that service isn't like providing an API, it's actually just providing data. Mm -hmm. Would that be possible? Yes, yes, it can be possible. So the service could be, so you could just call service and service will return the data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Could, yeah. Anything with it. Um, could you have guarantees that the data wouldn't be able to leave that node? Uh, it's yeah. also a good question. <laughs> well, it depends on the API, you can use uh, what we call particle by vault, this exchange box in, in say, inside the same uh, machine and uh, uh, you can um, yeah yeah but 
I, I'm sure about the guarantee that it uh, can't leave uh, because, um, well, the, the, the only guarantee that I could imagine is that uh, you whitelist the, the services or you whitelist the APIs of the services that have access to your data and you ensure that they have no output except like a number, for example. Something like that is absolutely doable. Maybe else. We will use that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can help implementing that. Yeah. yeah, 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 for sure. And, and, and also, your restriction on uh, zero knowledge proofs, currently, an you know, application on zero knowledge proofs. And probably it also would be achieved with zero knowledge proofs. Uh, now, working on like proof of capacity, proof of like some hardware resources for uh, like for miners mm -hmm. in zero knowledge proofs. And also, probably this uh, also could be. Somehow the members of the zero knowledge proofs. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. so, so how how we do at the moment? Uh, we work with Ocean Protocol, which is like a, a marketplace mm -hmm. for mostly data, but like also algorithms. So that's kind of you can kind of think of them like APIs, right? And mm -hmm. what we want to be able to do is at the moment with Ocean, you can only run one algorithm at a time in a single container. Mm -hmm. But we're modifying it so that you can run a, a pipeline of algorithms with loops and everything, right? Mm -hmm. But it all happens in one. Node one, uh, mm. one centralized compute provider, right? So the next step after that would be super cool uh, to implement mm. like this more peer to peer API mm. stuff. So um, maybe one provider uh, has one type of data, another provider has you know uh, another type of data, mm. and we want yeah. to like, you know go go between mm. different nodes. And I feel like that's where that could be. Yeah, yeah. We, 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 so and, and, and also like uh, you know, Except in our plans is to have a standard library for our plan, yeah. and uh, it would contain some useful algorithms like consensus for raft, for prediction, and so on. And looks like from your example, it also should be like used in like in your environment, mm -hmm. because probably some like or like almost all the system needs to be some sort of consensus, like application, and some other guarantees. So yes, yeah, yeah. In, yeah. Right future, there will be like. Uh, this algorithm is like how does it work? So, yeah. it work? So, so, what we could do is like we could uh, we could like uh, do a PR with the provider code from Ocean that like incorporates uh, an Aqua node in it, and then they could you know potentially that would, that would mean that mm -hmm. you could uh, you could route between different nodes. But I guess yeah, like we, mm -hmm. we work with the provider code on Ocean, so we could add like Aqua functionality to it. Be absolutely awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super cool. Mm -hmm. So um, also like uh, looking also into Polkadot. So like mm -hmm. we think that I'm not sure if you're looking into Polkadot and stuff, but like having like a, a palette of that that would include this. They also use like a loop to the uh, mm -hmm. way like uh, I guess pretty sure it's in Rust too. Well, it, it's all it's all in Rust, but in also slow assembly. So it might um, be interesting to have that there because because um, yeah, like, the way I think of it is like. Um, like we think of like everyone having their own like kind of like uh, IPFS node, their own like let's say um, uh, GPU we're assuming, mm -hmm. and so like if we have like let's say an Aqua VM on top of that, we can have essentially services through like let's say these like you know Python Docker container through like the GPU, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with Ray. Um, you no, it's basically. It's similar to what you guys are doing, but not for peer-to-peer -peer networks. It's like the abstraction of like agent-based systems for distributed systems. So it can connect with Kubernetes and it can also run locally. So we think that um, oh, right. it's a it's, it's new web of this. Yeah, right, right. Um, so like basically if we like the way the way we have it um, right now is like here, I'll just show you is or like, this is kind of like the way it's like a high level idea, um, but you have like, because the crazy thing is that like we've been talking about it conceptually this like peer to peer. Uh, yeah. So you have like a, a modular block, block, right? right? So it reads it into the main and so it's in a physics block. Mm -hmm. And then clients are essentially um, local cloud databases or other peer to peers. Mm -hmm. um, and then essentially you can yeah, compose them in like whichever way. Um, and then Ray is essentially like you have like you can uh, deploy like a, a class or an object um, mm -hmm. into this object space so you can dedicate resources to it locally 
and they're, they're demons essentially. So you can also call them basically, like you can call them with remote functions. So like I can basically like say what module I want, what function, and then hmm. the inputs. Exactly, that's as we have them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is all, this is all locally. Um, or it could be done in a cluster that's compiled with Kubernetes. And so basically, yeah, this is how we think of replacing this scope here with uh, essentially an Aqua VM. Mm -hmm. And then the services would just be the essentially client calls to uh, mm -hmm. to, to Ray. And then, yeah, you, basically we have like, you know, this is a typical pipeline. And then, you know, this is like a relay mm -hmm. pipeline. And then you can have different kind of like formats. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. So it totally makes sense. Yeah. And, and then when you talk about uh, popular mm -hmm. substrate, so uh, it's basically like you, you want to trigger this execution by launching the OS. So like, what's the integration? Yeah. yeah so um, right now, like uh, we have well, right now the stuff like we're building is uh, is connected to like EVM. So it's through like Brownie. So you're connecting. You, you can actually connect these Python processes and trigger uh, and enable smart contracts like in Python. So like you can trigger um, like smart contract events through Ray essentially via Python. And we want to also like add Cosmos and like Polkadot functionality. It's mm -hmm. probably gonna be Polkadot to the next step. And so for that, um, we would probably either like we're well that's the, in order to create your own like Polkadot uh, node, we would uh, essentially use our own like substrate node. Mm -hmm. And then we would probably incorporate some of the Aqua VM stuff to, to include that like functionality. Um, or have a separate Aqua VM node as well as a substrate node. Mm -hmm. um, but they both have like peer-to-peer -peer kind of like functionality, so it might be a bit redundant. Um, but essentially the idea is to have like a blockchain also like running on your computer or like a blockchain validator node. Um, and then um, is it, is it, is it, what does the all your brands about for it will be like some you know, open distributed city. Uh, open, yeah. Yeah, so let's see how stuff makes sense. Yeah. It's totally open. So, so, so you said that you were triggering the on chain events within the team, like you're saying it's contesting or yeah. So essentially um, I would have a like a client so the Python would be a client um, that would trigger through like let's say MetaMask or through like uh, um, essentially we have like a, an Ethereum client or a Ethereum medium based client like uh, Ganok. Uh, so mm -hmm. I have like a Ganok uh, container that essentially uh, allows you to essentially uh, sign transactions mm -hmm. from Python. Mm -hmm. And so that's how you connect your machine learning models with Python. Sorry, with, uh, with, with EDM chains. And you can do similar things with like Polkadot as well, any other chain really. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so, but you don't have to do it through Python. Like, you know, there's all this C JavaScript, like, but I, I prefer not, like, I, I prefer to have all the back end stuff in one language uh, and then all the front end stuff, like, in JavaScript or, like, but yeah, so it's like, we use React.js um, and we're also trying to build, like, you know, like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, these bits. So, like, we're using this graph, app so, but, like, kind of like visualizing, like, just like topologies. So, we'll use, like, you know, this type of graph range, but, you know, it's a bit more than that, but it's like, you know, we want to visualize like the interactions as well, um, so that it's easy for like developers to, to just like mm -hmm. you know drag and drop and connect with each other. That's kind of like so 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 great. And uh, is this document uh, in the public? Yeah. Oh, uh, which one? This one. Is this Kim's? Uh, this one. Uh huh. Uh, no, I can send it to uh -huh. you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Please send. And the 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 why you you talk about in this one? Oh, it's a R A R A S N Y to 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 R D B S. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should somehow change context. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. What are we doing? We we use like we use we use we can we can make the channels like uh, yeah. 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 I guess I would need your emails or something. Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That'd be great, yeah. But yeah, like seeing this, I was like, you know, this is, and then I guess another thing I was doing to like just combining this with like, like I guess you have to, you need to form groups of like contribution groups of like, let's say if I'm using your VM, like let's say it's not on like the, 
it's a nice network, but if let's say someone else is like a peer and I want to use their, let's say, GPU, mm -hmm. then like, how do you like, I guess, verify that, like that's another kind of, like, there's a lot of problems. <laughs> yeah, so, so like, you can't solve you, everything. You know, not enough for so, yeah, yeah, so it's like, so it's like, it's a lot of problems. So I'm not sure if that one, like people are trying to solve that one separately. Um, but like, yeah, just even like having like a proof of concept with like, Fluence would be pretty cool, I think, because then that would just like open up your product to all these Python. Like, it's just mm -hmm. insane how many people can probably use this and are Python developers. And like, it's like this would just like bring them to a whole new world and you know, collaboration. Mm -hmm. There's some ideas for comps and stuff as well. Like, um, uh, like, for example, you could have two modules where the first module, uh, the aim is to like crowdsource data, just get people to like add label data for, like cats and dogs. That'll be the first module, and then the second module will be like training machine learning model mm -hmm. classifier to classify the cats and dogs. So you could be like uh, uh, crowdsource ten images, train it, and see what the performance is. If it's not, if the performance isn't good, go back and crowdsource ten mm -hmm. more, and then train it again. And this kind of dynamic way of training models, like with crowdsourcing and training uh, in a loop, is has never been possible with machine learning. And I think it just completely like change. Yeah, yeah, and it looks like a key for Aqua because yeah, it's yeah. easily represented. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. exactly. And, and also, we were thinking about uh, physical machine learning when you have like hyper uh, hyperparameters, like they learned on different machines and combined together. And also, it looks like the map reduces a uh, very natural pattern for uh, Aquavia. Mm. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's like <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll like do a deep dive and see if we start building some pure like proof of concepts. And yeah, I, I think I think it'd be really really useful. Um, even like. Just like, cause I, 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 like, I believe in like people should set up their own peers and like you know manage their own peers and like you know be able to connect with other peers, um, at very local. And then obviously, if they can't do that, then they would need some public infrastructure so they can like mm -hmm. go through like the Fluence network. Um, and yeah, like it's just like that's there's a lot of like potential that I see in this market. Uh, and yeah, you guys seem like you're. Pretty far into it, so I was like, "Yeah, this is pretty sick." <laughs> Have you looked at Fetch AI at all? Have you heard of Fetch? I, I looked at it like a few years ago. I don't remember. Yeah. I haven't looked in a few years either, but I know they're kind of doing like Asian-based, uh, yeah, kind of like APIs. Asian has like an API, and mm -hmm. they're, I guess, like sometimes even like traveling in the real world, like uh, yeah, interacting with other agents. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they so, implement it in Go, where they use like they also use like PHP, and they they call it the Open Agent system, and they basically like just like sending like you know calls with between agents. And it's all implemented in Python and Go, so similar to how if this is kind of like you have like a a peer a Go peer, and then yeah, that's making like gRPC calls with like this Python part, um, and so like it's just like each like agent is essentially just a model and then they just communicate with each other. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is like, it's we're still in a pretty early kind of stage. Um, there's also BitTensor, which is implemented. I've been looking more and more into that, I think. So BitTensor? Yeah, it's called BitTensor. It's mm -hmm. like, it's BitTensor. So basically it's like, it's just like mm -hmm. a network mm -hmm. of like all these, they, they calculate the shapely values of all these uh, models mm -hmm. after one problem, and then they try to find which models are the best as the best ones. There's like it's only solving text model. Like, they're just doing text modeling right now, um, but I think some sort of work to work to work. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. But um, like from the way I was like thinking of extending this was like so they're actually using su uh, substrate um, like Rust like you know. Substrate uh, polka dot like kind of like you know uh, uh, node mm -hmm. as a peer to peer layer, and then they have like a Python layer on top. Um, but like I was thinking like you know like what is the value of a network, right? The value of a network is essentially the APIs, the endpoints. Mm -hmm. Like the endpoints are yes. essentially providing value to certain set of customers. So like like I like they're just focusing on one like kind of like network but like what if you can allow people to create their own networks and mm -hmm. like allow them to form their own endpoints so that whoever buys into those endpoints fuels value into that network 
you descri you describe them exactly our idea of self networks. Yeah, yeah, it's really pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, it's, uh, this idea of that like public interface forms like so it's really uh, really what we're thinking of often not very aware of previously. And what we want to implement, but like we don't have now enough capacity and we postpone it for a bit, but yes, it's cool idea that also you yeah. And uh, by the way, I, I, have, I have a question. Uh, like, what, what is the state of your project? Is it like uh, already implemented somehow, or it's uh, only I don't know, it's only prototype? Is it? Um, yes, thanks, Paul. So we have like the peer to peer stuff is actually pretty minimal. Mm -hmm. Like, in fact, it's probably almost non existent. Like, so that's why I think Aqua VM would be really helpful. We have like the Python, like at least. I'm talking because this is like we actually kind of like, like kind of like you know started collaborating five months ago. Um, so at least for me, like I know you've done like a lot with uh, Ocean Protocol, um, but for me it was like I have all like the like the Ray stuff is integrated with like you can mm -hmm. basically what I showed you you can do it locally, you can deploy it and after locally. Now I just need to connect them across like different like peers, mm -hmm. and it's all in Docker Compose. So you so you know so you can like store. Like I have Mongo, Postgres, MinIO, and like um, IPFS as like my main storage, and so like yeah, like all I need to do is now have the peer to peer there, mm -hmm. and like if I want the blockchain there too, but it's like you know the peer to peer is more important to me. Yes. <laughs> so, 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 sounds yes, sounds of the things could uh, take place, yeah. uh, and also do you know about uh, how like. <laughs> How WebAssembly could be integrated with uh, uh, neural networks. So there is a like WebAssembly like is a, could be considered as a black box that has exports and imports, and you know like uh, WebAssembly can't uh, call any function from the system except imports, and there is a special sub format called WASI, like sent from the some system interface, yeah. and there is a uh, like sub uh, uh, substandard called uh, WIT, uh, WebAssembly three types, uh, and they stands like and they extends uh, like WASI with uh, your other keywords. And there is a standard for neural networks called WASI and M. Oh, and uh, okay. I'm not sure is it serious for you or not, but guys, the uh, truth go with what WASI? Oh, WASI, oh, yes. and uh, uh, yeah. Okay. It is a, is a, mm, I can. Yeah, I think it's the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, is a, there is a repository for, for it. Okay. Is it it's not in proposal stage, but they like works in the WebAssembly. Okay, yeah, like, cause this would be this would be useful for like, let's say, having WebAssembly. I, I was wondering if you can like make um, calls, like let's say if, if you're having a call, like a WebAssembly um, kind of like VM, Making calls to let's say the like let's say the, let's say a Python um, like or maybe it could be like a local API like uh, yeah I mean, I mean that like um, if the, the standard will be enough I'm not sure Pro so highly likely that it won't because it's on the proposal stage but uh, if it so it could be used from the our runtime directly mm -hmm. meaning that like uh, you could just deploy a module service yeah. that could call this uh, import functions like from the standard uh, and then this function would be called uh, from this call of front end it would be called actually uh, like Python or other like uh, neural network code like GPU it doesn't matter mm -hmm. like it depend depending on your like runtime depending on how it is specified. Yeah so I guess like if, if that so that assumes that all of the the whole runtime has to be within WebAssembly can't like so. I was thinking like maybe you can like have can you do API calls within WebAssembly like local calls like to like let's say Python through like your yes. local host because yes. that might be a better a better fix. Yes. Like, a yes. That yes. Might we, we could we could call um, this special interface uh, that could call CLI binaries on your system. Mm -hmm. Not CLI, just binaries on your systems. And I have a. I will have a talk tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we need to pull request it. <laughs> What's the name of this project? Uh, so I would have a talk about our runtime, and uh, I would also cover the topic. How, like, uh, could we 
recall, but yes, uh, I think if you just if it doesn't require uh, some form of connection to or something like that, and if you just could call a binary, mm -hmm. then it would work. Okay. Yeah. Like in, in, in the current in the current state. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is that because it's all the notification? Yeah, because then like you would you would need to like as long as your environment is is running, like I guess as long as the Docker container is running with the Python environment GPU enabled, then like you can call that through like you wouldn't need explicitly to have that embedded in WebAssembly. You would just have a function that would call that like local kind of like it's like a local API call essentially. Yes. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the way <laughs> the yeah. box, the box yes. well, I think I don't would it myself. Yeah. So, well, just yeah. Yeah. No, but yeah, that, that'd be that would that, be really cool. That'd be really important. Um, yeah, that would be Yeah. yeah. So, so let's try to uh, be in a like yeah, 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 I think I heard of it through one of the more of a kind of underwear. Yeah, blockchain niche conferences. Because, like, we're kind of like, we quite alone in space, but uh, we, uh, yeah, I mean, like, blockchain people at some point, there was an issue that there was a lot of exploration in terms of different directions, like AI, like blockchain, for this, for that, and then, you know, it was like, it became a big focus on DeFi and stuff. Yeah. And kind of plugins for DeFi, like for all chain stuff, kind of not relevant. Yeah. So, so we kind of try to shift the, the focus to that. Yeah. 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 We, we were researching this before, but we were like always kind of uh, starting from different direction, like not not from direction of hey, like we have Ethereum, we have EVM, how do we scale EVM for that too? We were like, hey, we want to build the cloud, how are we gonna use blockchain to build the cloud? And, <laughs> and, and, and we had like a ton of new clusters and things like that, like, and we could yeah. deploy like a spin off the the ad hoc ten million clusters and one virus and that. Yeah, and we were like. Hmm, can it be useful for like as L2 to Ethereum? And you know, we we dropped this idea, but actually like we could we could build some you know, L2 solution, but we yeah. decided not to do it. So is there any blockchain in the US? Uh no, no, but well we will we'll have the on chain economics, like the payments oh, okay. to mm -hmm. like to be able to pay notes for, for execution. Yeah, yeah. Uh but not yet. So that's the after crypto just pay and stuff, just pay. Yeah, I think yeah, it just needs to yeah, not, yeah. make sure like you want you want reliability. Like, if you don't want yeah. to have your own notes, you want yeah. reliability, yeah. so you have to pay. And for payments, you need to have proofs. Mm -hmm. And for proofs, you need to have the CK magic. And you like, <laughs> 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 <laughs>